today's lecture, I would like us to try to implement uh, the notion of, of a mutable environment. Uh, firstly, let's start by uh, visualizing what is an environment, and then we'll proceed to implementing one. So here's a depiction that I actually got from the SICP book in section 3.2. There's this figure 3.1, which mentions um, the notion of an environment, which we sh which is shared in our language lambda d. So here is just a depiction of of a particular environment. I'm going to explain what's the idea behind it, uh, and then I'm going to show you the equivalent um, notation as we see it in our uh, slides and also in our um, check tests and your tests for evaluation. Uh, but let's start with the figure. So what we see here is uh, three environments, if you will. First one is uh, the one that starts here and whose parent environment would be this one. Uh, second environment is this one, this box right here, whose parent environment is this one. And finally, the root environment is this one. The idea here is that you might have code that will be referencing uh, one or even zero uh, of these um, environments. So each environment contains, as you know, pairs of binders. Um, and uh, basically, the value of a certain variable is um, done by looking at the nearest uh, or of its definition in the nearest environment. So you start with, let's say you're talking about x, you would think about what is the value of x is 7. If you were to think about like y, y is defined in the parent, so you would uh, return y assigned to 5, uh, and z is assigned to 6, is assigned to 6 uh, and not in the parent. However, notice that in this environment, um, x is defined in its parent with 3 being assigned to 3, but in the current environment is takes press the definition takes precedence, right? So x is assigned to 7 and not to 3, although in in the parent it is assigned to 3. Hopefully that makes sense. So basically the way you look up the value of a variable is always you start from the current frame. Um, so I call each of these boxes a frame and uh, uh, um, an environment is the arrow to this box, right? So environment represents this frame and this frame, right? Because they're connected. Um, I kind of lost my train of thought. <laughs> so um, to know the, the value of a variable, you go through the frame of the starting environment. So which is in this case for environment handle one, pointed by handle one would be this frame. So is uh, x assigned here? Yes, then you return 7. But if you think about y, then you would have to um, go up and return y. And if you have three, you know, it could it could have multiple links. You have to go up until you find the first one. The first um, variable that you're looking for assigned to a certain value. Um, and that's basically it. That's what you're going to have at runtime while your program is running. You're going to have a structure that um, will be expanded. You can think of it as an inverted tree. Uh, however, there will be links connecting. Um, yeah, so you have um, you always have one parent, so it's really just an invert, inverted tree, which might have, you know, each node, as you can see here, might have two or more um, um, children, right? Uh, so now let's see how this shows up in... Uh, in our textual notation. So in the code, whenever you have a handle of zero, that will represent it as E0. Handle of one, it's E1, E2 for handle of two, and so on. Uh, in this case, we have two handles. Handle one points to this environment. So let's start with E1. Um, each box, you represent the contents of a box. Again, a frame is a box. So in this frame, you have two binders. So you they will re be represented as pairs. Uh, and the parent, the link to the parent is represented in the first element. In the case of the root uh, environment, there is no parent, so it doesn't show. Uh, it's not represented textually. So you only have its binders. So this could possibly be an empty list. Right, so this is a, a list of pairs. 
in the root case, but in the all the others which have at least one accessor, well, let's have exactly one accessor. You cannot have more than one accessor. Then you would have, or more than one parent. This is the parent, sorry. To, to, let me re restate this. So each frame can only have optionally a parent. The only case in which you don't have a parent is the root, and there's only one. Otherwise, um, the frame always has a parent, and uh, it's only one. What else? Um, so this is, that is it. That's basically it. I think there was anything else I want to talk about in this slide. So just a recap, arrows represent uh, references. So this means parent point is this frame, parent is this frame. So each reference is represented by this arrow. Um, and the contents of the reference is represented by where the arrow points to. So in this case, the intuition is that there's a, a handle zero here. Uh, that is visualized by this arrow. Boxes are called frames. The contents of boxes are the binders and also this link. And then an environment. Um, you have access to an, an environment is represented by a, a handle and it consists of uh, all the linked frames together in order, right? So in this case, you would have a handle to two, and then you have this frame and this frame, they're all reachable via this initial frame, via this initial frame and handle. Um, yeah, and then I talked about variable lookup, which uh, follows from the first definition, starting from the handle, the, the frame of the current handle uh, upwards. Okay. So, what I would like you to try to do is um, starting from handle one, what are all variables that are accessible via handle one? Try to write those down uh, and see if you understand that. And do the same for handle one, handle two, and handle zero. Okay, so in the next video I'm talking about, I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna implement it live, uh, the notion of an environment, the notion of a frame, um, and that's basically it, okay? and of course uh, their usage.